Hey, church family. Uh, as some of you might have known, yesterday there was a news conference by Governor Newsom, and they released some updates as far as what churches and other houses of worship can do in the state. And so I wanted to give you guys an update. We met as elders this morning, and I want to communicate some things to you as quickly as possible. But before I did that, uh, I wanted to jump into something that God has been putting on my heart as this whole uh, regathering and the church and all these things um, have come a topic of conversation locally and globally. I want to bring our attention to Philippians chapter 2 because I think God is most interested in our hearts at this time as I think he always is throughout the narrative of scripture. He's interested in what's happening in our hearts and our lives uh, just as much as he's concerned with what we do and how we do it. In Philippians 2, Paul is addressing the church in Philippi. He says, Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ, any comfort from his love, any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Think of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges he took the humble position of a slave, and he was born as a human being when he appeared in human form. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. There's a few points that Paul makes I want to draw our attention to. One is unity. He says to work together with one mind and purpose. There are differences and opinions on how churches and people for that matter should be moving forward. It was way easier to do quarantine as a pastor. Doing quarantine, there was no option. We just did it and we figured out online streaming and all that. But now as we re-engage in bringing churches back online with live gatherings, there's a variety of opinions and people are very upset uh, uh, about what others are doing and how they perceive things should be doing done. So I want to remind you, as Paul reminds the church, to strive for unity. Strive for unity at all costs. The second thing he brings up is humility. Don't be selfish. He says, look out for others as better than yourselves. So this is not the time in our lives and in our city and in our nation where, if ever, we should be demanding our way. Uh, this is not the time for your personal preference to be uh, foremost in your thought. It's an opportunity for humility. But I think the real question is, how can we do this? Because I think we'd all agree that we should have unity. I think we'd all agree that we should be humble. But how do we maintain hearts that actually are that way? And Paul says the, the reason you can do this, the power to be able to do this, is the gospel. He says, think of how Christ came. Although he was God, he didn't think of equality of God as something to cling to and gave up his divine privileges and humbled himself even to die a criminal's death on the cross. He gives us the model that we can be humble because God was humble for us first. We can only do for others what we believe has first been done for us. And so the power of understanding the gospel that Jesus Christ himself didn't come to ser uh, be served but came to serve and give his life, lay his life down as a ransom for many. We have a king that had every right to demand his way, but didn't. And so as I talk about what we have chosen to do for now as elders and as church leadership, uh, take it with uh, grace and understanding and humility that, uh, I don't know about you guys, but this is the first pandemic that I've had to navigate through, and especially as a a church leader. In fact, all the churches around our country and around the world right now, we're all trying to figure out how do we do this in love and in truth and in humility and in best practices and operating by what the government wants and not offending others and all that stuff. So 
what does this all have to do with our church? Um, I believe unity, humility, and all those things are, are gospel-centered motivations. There is a lot of tension right now. I want to encourage you, we need a ton of grace for one another in the next coming weeks and months. Now for the information that you probably have been wanting to hear. Uh, we are going to gather face-to-face -face this Sunday. We are limited to 25% capacity. So for our room that seats 200, maybe a little more, that limits us to 50 people. With 10 or so volunteers and staff, that leaves us with about 40 RSVPs that we can take. We have set up the Church Center app so that you can RSVP and let us know if you would like to come this upcoming Sunday, the 31st. So if you don't RSVP, please don't show up. If you're concerned about your health uh, or you have prior health complications, I wanna encourage you to not come. Um, this isn't the time to, to take that risk, I don't think. Uh, in fact, if you're on the fence at all about coming, if you're even not that excited about coming, just stay home for the first couple weeks. It's actually would benefit us to only have about 30 or 40 people here because it'll give us a couple weeks to sort of reassess how people flow in and out of our building and make sure that we're seating people appropriately and all those things. This is a soft opening and this is sort of our test run of what it's gonna look like to gather uh, together again. And um, there's no pressure at all to be here. So um, you're just as much the church if you're watching this at home still, or if you're here with us live. Um, and like I said, if, if you're even on the fence, just don't come, let's see how it goes. And next week we'll give you a new update based on how things went. Um, I also wanna say for the sake of argument, if you do show up, it doesn't mean that you're reckless. The, the state of California wouldn't have put these things out there if they didn't have a reasonable expectation that we can do these things and do them well. And so that's my expectation, that as staff, we've all been through the requirements. As elders, we talked through it this morning. Uh, we will proceed taking your best interests at heart. I'm, maybe you're asking from a personal opinion, Tim, why are you doing, why are you moving forward with this? And I think based on the surveys we've gotten and the conversations I've had, I'm concerned that the health risk uh, mentally and spiritually and people that struggle with isolation and depression to continue to not gather puts those people at risk in a different way as well. And I'd like to accommodate. And as long as we've got the support of our local government, we should do that in faith that they've analyzed the risks and we can do it. If you have any questions at all, please email us and we'll do our best to respond as fast as possible. Love you guys. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Even though you'll have your mask on, please bring one. Don't mess around. Um, you can bring kids to sit with you. Although if you think that your kids can't stay seated and they might be running around jumping on people, I just ask you to wait until we get some more relaxed tensions and some of these infection counts go down and all that stuff. Um, and plus, you don't want your kids miserable, stuck at church where they don't want to be <laughs> against their will more than usual. But really excited to be able to gather again and uh, miss you guys. And I'm, I'm really, really hoping that this all, man, just gets healed and resolved and restored soon. Uh, until then, let's keep being the church day in and day out and go with Jesus. Amen.